Alabama takes over officially at their own 12 with 444 remaining, trailing Georgia 20 to 13. And uh, they have got to assume this may well be the last possession Georgia gives them. They start with a one back three receiver set. And Wilson with a fake to coffee wants to go deep up the right sideline, and it is incomplete for Hall at midfield. I expected them to go with a play that was something they'd had a lot of success with. Second down and 10. If he gets to third and long, Bama two for 13 on third downs tonight. Wilson in the gun will go deep left this time, and he has a man. It is Brown caught at the 45 and down. Keith Brown with the biggest play of the night for Alabama, 43 yards from John Parker Wilson, who tried deep right for D.J. Hall with no success. He goes deep left to Keith Brown for big success. Nothing fancy about that. Brown simply took off and ran by Brian Evans, the corner on the left side. And they hurry up. First down and 10. Snap from the 45. Hand off Coffey for five yards. Off left tackle. Down to the 40. Second down and one. And another short toss complete. This is Bailey. Cuts back over the middle to midfield. First down, Georgia. Clock stopped at 33 seconds. They've got one timeout to use, but they don't want to burn it here. Well, they're going to wait for the set of the ball at the 49 of Alabama on the left pass. Snap it as quickly after that as they can. 20 to 20. Georgia ball. Clock rolls inside 30 seconds. First and 10, the tied 49. Low snap. Just ahead of the corner blitz. The throw off the hands of Chandler and incomplete again. This, however, would have been his best catch of the balls that he's had a shot at tonight. Yeah, that was a tough one. It was a well-thrown ball despite the pressure. So second and 10 with 23 seconds. They need about 20 yards or so to be in field goal range. At the tied 49 again, shotgun, three receivers, one back. And it is Roaring. Snap back. Stafford under pressure, throws behind Thomas Brown and incomplete with 18 seconds. And so Alabama decides we're just going to blitz him into quick incompletion. Yeah, it's a good concept. They're blitzing, but they're playing a two-deep coverage behind it so that they will not give up the deep ball. That time it was Ezekiel Knight coming from strong backer. 18 seconds, third and 10. They need about 20 for field goal range. 10 for the first. Same look, Stafford of the gun. Snap back. And the handoff to Brown. Cuts it left. 45 down to the 41. Two yards shy of the first down. And the clock will stop here with 12 seconds remaining. Wow. Georgia yeah. with its last timeout. Yeah, at this point, you have to be thinking field goal. I mean, if you do, you're talking about a 58-yarder, 59-yarder. Yeah. Well, we are talking about a guy who has hit a 58-yarder. Brandon Katu, now that's the third longest in the history of the SEC, is also the longest ever without a kicking tee. Yeah, I, I, I don't see it here, though. I think what you have to do, 12 seconds, you have to put, you have to go one more play, and you have to throw to the sideline, an out route or something to get the first down, maybe only take six or five seconds off of it, yeah. and then try maybe a 50 52 yarder. They need two here for the first, but I've got to think at least 10 or 12 on the pattern. Yeah, into the win. You just otherwise it's not worth yeah, it. Yeah, you, you can't make and you can't throw a Hail Mary against this defense right now and make it. They're laying off too far. All right, here we go. 12 seconds in regulation. Tied at 24th and two, Georgia at the tied 41. Stafford in the gun. Has the snap. Pump fake, throws over the middle, caught. Chandler hangs on to the 30, and timeout with five seconds remaining. The clock will start as soon as they've marked the ball for ready. They've got to do a downer, quick one. No timeouts. The officials move the chains. They haven't cranked the clock yet. As soon as they do, Stafford will spike it. Now they crank it, and he spikes it with three seconds. Wow. So they did about the same distance we were talking about. And finally, Trip Chandler, who's been guilty of the drops tonight, hangs on for 11 yards on fourth and two. What great time management by Georgia there. I mean, to pick up the first down, to get down, 
let the clock stop with the mark for first down, and then to spike it and get your team on the field. So where did we say they needed to get that realistic field goal range? The 30-yard line. 30, that's where this snap will come. And an icing timeout called here by timeout. Alabama. Alabama. That's their first. If it matters, they could call two more. I don't know why they wouldn't. <laughs> Well, we, we saw last week, if you were watching any NFL games, you saw Denver do that to the Oakland Raiders where the Raiders were about to line up and kick a game-winning field goal. Mike Shanahan of Denver called a timeout right before. The field goal was good, but it didn't count because of the timeout. And when they came back and kicked again, Oakland missed it. This kick will come from the same distance Brandon Cattu hit from earlier. A little different situation, though. A lot of crowd noise, game on the line, a lot more pressure. He's a senior. He is at 82%, the most accurate kicker in Georgia history. This is to win the game. This will be officially, I believe, 47 yards, angle from the left hash, left to right, and Alabama now with its second timeout. Ryan Mims. The holder, Jeff Henson, the snapper. Here is the snap and the hold. They're both good. Kick is on the way, and it is no good. Just wide left. And overtime is ahead in Tuscaloosa. On ESPN Radio this year, for the second time in our four weeks, overtime. This time, it will be Georgia and Alabama tied at 20. Georgia led 20 to 10 with 12.23 remaining after Brandon Cattu hit a 48-yarder. And he had a 48-yarder to win it if the gun just barely go wide left. And I'm wondering if uh, the bear blew up a little extra breeze right to left just at the proper Isn't instance. Isn't it ironic that the wind kicked up just as Cattu was lining up for that field goal? And also, second week in a row, Alabama with a fourth quarter comeback. They had gone the entire Mike Shula era, six years, in fact, since their previous fourth quarter comeback. So they were down 10 with the 12.23 to go. So Alabama will start the overtime periods. Of course, untimed downs starting at the 25. And after two possessions, each team must go for two. Dave Barnett, Rod Gilmore, Joe Shad, OT in Tuscaloosa, 20 to 20. As we start the one back set, and John Parker Wilson will hand it to that one back, and it is Coffey who finds nothing off the left side. Then Coffey stymied for no gain. It was almost a, a give-up play. That thing had nothing going right from the start. The timing seemed off. It was going to the left side. Coffey had nowhere to run immediately. And now you've got a second and ten. A little odd because Alabama was so aggressive at the end of regulation. Georgia 1-7 and seven in its history here in Tuscaloosa. The one win five years ago when they went 13-1. and one. So second and 10 from the 25 again, and Wilson this time has four receivers, two on either side. He's in the gun. Five-man rush. The throw is incomplete at the five behind Cadell along the far sideline. Uncatchable. Uh, yeah, and I think they missed the matchup that they really wanted to the right side. Roy Upchurch, the running back, was out man-on-man -man against Daniel Ellerby, the linebacker. And that is a bad matchup for Georgia. But uh, John Parker Wilson never looked his way. So third and ten. If they don't move, they have a 42-yard field goal into this win. And it is fairly stiff. The two just missed into it. Third and ten. Same look. Wilson in the gun, backs up, and throws incomplete inside the 15-yard line intended for D.J. Hall. Oh, that was almost never going to get to D.J. Hall. Astra Allen, the corner to that side, was sitting out there waiting for the ball, stepped in front, and almost picked it off. He should have picked it off. He just didn't get both hands around it. So Tiffin to try a 42-yarder. That would equal the longest of his seasons. Angle from the left hash is going to be left to right. P.J. Fitzgerald has the hole, and the kick is on the way, and good. A no-doubter from Lee Tiffin, and it's Alabama with the first blood on the first overtime possession, 23-20. 
And if you're Georgia, this is why you elect to let Alabama have the ball first. You want to know what they do, and you are essentially the home team in a baseball game with the last at bat. And now they know a field goal ties and a touchdown wins for them. Brandon Katu didn't take long to uh, contemplate his miss at the end of regulation. He gets right back up, starts warming up into the net across the way. And now here come Matthew Stafford and the Georgia offense to take over. All this action down below us to the goal to our right, the south end zone, into the win. I formation on first down. Motion by the tight end, Chandler. Stafford with a play action throw. Going for it right here, and it is caught. Touchdown, Mikey Henderson has won it for Georgia. One play, all it takes in overtime for the Bulldogs. And they race to the far corner of the end zone and dogpile the dog hero, Mikey Henderson. Georgia, 26, Alabama, 23.